thing about New York is it comes at you from so many different directions. And the thing that Bill has an ability to do is walk within that and not get jostled by it. Take it in, digest it, and transform it, and sort of keep his equanimity. I live in New York a lot of the time, and he's spent a lot of the last 10 years in New York drawing and painting New York scenes. And um, I find it very uh, powerful, very evocative. It's also a, a foreigner's view of New York, a very perceptive view of New York in that sense. Very few artists of repute have really um, involved themselves in some direct observation of their own city. Maybe it needed somebody like a, a foreigner to come and actually look at it and, and, and wish to enjoy that and say something about it. But um, I can only speak personally when I say that out of the experience of, of looking and, and, and digesting these, these impressions, it's greatly energized my working process. My work um, before I went to the Royal College of Art was, was essentially figurative. I mean, it was directly to do with drawing my impressions of things around me. And, and, and that might have initially come from being interested in um, fr uh, 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 19th century painters, um, probably probably majority of them being French anyway, because the, the school that I was at, Walthamstow School of Art, somehow was in that set of influences, that frame of references. But when I went to the Royal College, it was almost as if there was an infusion of ideas, and I was totally thrown. I was at sea um, with these new ideas, and for a number of years, I was totally all over the place, and I. Um, I did. Uh, I was heavily influenced by Rauschenberg and Jasper Johns, a lot of American artists. And my painting language, the way I used language and build up surfaces and layering on layering, um, came out of those those artists. Interestingly enough, and it didn't come out of the 19th century at all. I was instrumental as a lawyer in bringing Jacqueline to the United States. I got him his green card, and as a lawyer, I was instrumental in getting him here. And one of the things that Jacqueline agreed with was where he would have his studio. And he found the toughest, dirtiest, meanest section in New York, the meat district, for his studio. found it for me and so I, I was just, um, she rang me, I was in London and she rang me from New York and said, um, I found an apartment and I found a studio, do you want it? And I just made a decision to come to America on the spot. Um, and so when I came to this particular studio, I mean, it, it was like an office space and it was just fine, it was anonymous. And there was a view out of the window which was, um, the view that 
that, that, that existed, and I decided to paint it because it was there. Each day he would go out from that studio and he would walk up and down the New York City Meat District. Now, when he left the Meat District and he went to see parades and he went to the dog shows and the other things, that was the easy scene. Now, you remember what he left? He left England, flowers, landscapes, people, and he got hard and he got tough. And what you are seeing here is Jacqueline turned on by his subject matter, which is not what he was in England. He came to New York with an innocent eye. I mean, he wasn't jaundiced by the sort of blacker aspects of New, New York when he came. And so he saw it in sort of purely painterly terms. And he realized that New York actually hadn't been painted as it is now. And, he was just totally fascinated. I mean, he was, in fact, he was sort of inspired by it. It's a very selfish city because everybody who comes here comes here to for themselves to make money and then to leave most of them leave and so therefore they're actually only thinking of themselves and not of other people and that makes for a selfish society and New York is very much like that and the poor and the weak do fall by the by the wayside and it's a city where there's still very little help for, for those who are weak. And it does eventually get to you. I mean, if you've never had any social conscience, you get it here. Watch the camera! And I didn't, hadn't really attempted very much subjects which uh, were outside of my own um, small experience. One of the one of the extraordinary things for me coming to New York, New York was that um, it was almost as if I'd, be, I was, I'd been waiting for a subject matter and I got here and here it was, you know, and um, it was sort of waiting for me in a way. And, um, and all, I, all I really had to do um, was um, pit my own interest in language, that painting language, against the, the content, and off it went. You know, it wasn't about actually finding something that was, it wasn't about being considered. You know, it, it just hit me. As soon as I got here, I was just overwhelmed by one impression after the other. And so I just never actually ever have a thought about what I'll paint about. It's always, how can I edit it? takes a judgment on New York by the subject matter in selecting the subject matter more than in the way he paints them. There's a kind of repertorial interest, I mean, which I think amounts to a good 50% of the activity. You know, like you gather information, um, which is to do with my relationship with the outer arena, but as I said, the inner arena of one's imagination and what one hopes to the feeling that you hope to put into the work um, is the other aspect. The other aspect, you know, um, it's like on the one hand, the, the, what, the exciting thing about New York for me, or, or the subject matter, is that uh, I find my, I found myself saying less, saying, "Look at me." What I was actually saying is, "Look at that," and I became a vehicle for that. And then, then I find the language to actually to, to um, manifest that wish to express. So it was impressions, expression, manifestation. So I start, and maybe something I feel quite strongly about because I think, there's a, um, I think there's a lot of painting that starts from the wish to manifest rather than the wish to experience. 
Um, and so the excitement for me being in New York was having the, um, the, um, the reward, in a way, of, of just having all these impressions thrown at me and then having to come to terms with it some way. collaborating for since about 86, right? 86, 85, 85 like and that. kind of going to different locations and I draw or Abel would be taking photographs and it just kind of... Well, it wasn't necessarily that this was the work that I was doing because since I've been in New York, I've mostly been doing portrait work for magazines, but just sort of on these nocturnal explorations because I knew the city a little more than Bill had. Um, we yeah. would just sort of... Right. Start keep exploring things and keep instigating each other to go out and just look more than anything. Well, there was a whole series of places we went to, I and mean, we started off with 40 seconds. Inside some of those places, you felt a little awkward about drawing. Yeah. So I ended up carrying the camera. Right, yeah, because I couldn't draw. In they there. were very, uh, yeah. There. They were very uptight about that. So what I did is right. I put a camera around my neck, right. and set up sort of a remote little. Uh, That's right. Uh, cord That's right. that would activate the uh, shutter, right. and, we, we, and we just we kept got, walking around and, and, and photographing. It wrong. We were right, a couple right, of right. Uh, amateurs in there, right? And did basically, right? they had no idea what we were doing. Interesting about all these ones is the way they came out. They were all in. They were all about movement. You actually, the figuration right, right. is got totally is, distorted. Didn't got it? totally distorted. I mean, they almost had a kind of Bacon-esque feel to them. Um, just like this kind of movement of these figures, just being there at one moment and then just melting down. Prior to this painting, I'd done a painting um, called the Chess Players which they were, they were looking onto a group of people playing chess. And this, was, this painting was the, was the um, sister one to that, where the center part of the um, keyhole of the sex shop on 42nd Street was the, is the um, checkerboard floor. So in that sense, it's a, quite a, it's a conceptual piece of work in the sense that it, um, I know it's not just about me doing, drawing an impression of something and then presenting to it as a piece of a moment in life. It's, it's, a, it's about a series of moments. And, but in this particular painting, being a diptych, the, uh, the horse, in essence, moves across. So this sequence is a different um, uh, moment, if you like. So that moment, this character moves across. And there's various sort of plays on that. These are a little uh, harder, a little cruder. Um, but this is actually the, the shot through the peephole yeah. that then comes up in the painting in this ex exhibition. I'm a bit of a snob, you know, raised to be a dancer. I know that dancers are passionate and musicians are passionate and actors are passionate, but I never thought of this type of artist as being passionate. It's very, as I said, snobbish of me to actually see them go through the process. And it's fascinating to watch this man collect energy before he makes any kind of mark on the surface that he's working on. He makes circular motions with his hands. He takes a deep breath. And suddenly, out of nowhere, there's this, this strike. I thought, this is going to be fun. <laughs> it's wonderful watching him work. You can actually see him gather it in and release it. Yes. You should pose for him sometime. <laughs> As I said, I work in terms of this. It's like it's somewhat schizophrenic in its. Um, in the process that I'm, as I was suggesting before, that 
I build and plot, and then one's body takes over. You know, so I'm f moving between those different um, centers in me. I mean, it, there's moments when one's intellectual center is necessary, and there are other moments where one's moving center takes over and is often far more intelligent in terms of its, certainly in terms of its speed. I mean, if I relied on my logical, my reasoning to um, approach a painting, I'd be plodding. In the last year, I've been filming paintings in the sense that I've been, I haven't been filming them, I've been taking uh, transparencies every hour or two while I've been painting them. If, with the big battle painting, I thought I have a year and a half hour by hour report of it, which um, in a way is a little mini film, rather like those, you know, flip books or whatever you call them. I was in Arezzo and saw the Piero della Francesca painting, The Battle, and that, that extraordinary, um, wonderful use of geometry and the interaction and of, 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 of images of people together. And that just excited me as a, as a draftsman. And I'm interested in geometry and all those certain aspects of, um, of, of, of form. And so that was a reason to attempt something as ambitious as this. And I, and I must admit, I looked for a subject that would allow me to, to um, come to terms with that. So there's a play between a number of interests here. As I said, I'm not an, it's not about illustrating um, um, a social situation. I mean, one comes to terms with it, but I'm just saying, it's the same thing as, as any, other, any one of the other pictures, it's simply saying, here it is. pictures they're not trying to show I mean how terrible a struggle is in a in a in a square in New York or what it's necessarily what it's like to be on a Sunday afternoon in Central Park although that comes into it it gives an image of the complexity of culture and of the relationship of an artist to its own culture and how the culture sees itself so it's something that's intensely reflexive but it's a complicated relationship and that's an extremely um, important one for us to, to understand because by presenting a series, if you like, not necessarily of mirrors, but maybe one or two or three or four Chinese boxes of what we think might be happening to us and might, we might be seeing around us, the artist, I think, stimulates us to a sort of more keen realization of what it's like to be around. wants to live with a painting like that that's a miserable story but it's so theatrical it's so sort of Italian uh, Renaissance almost that, that that it does inspire you and it's I, I think it's very poignant and uh, in its inspiration that's why I like to live with it also again the the great light that we see in the picture is is, is overwhelming What's interested me with a lot of the paintings, kind of what we're talking about in a way, is that there are some, some paintings are, are, are more relating to some sort of idea of chaos or disorder and a more asymmetrical 
observation of life. What, I mean, in more formal terms, it, something like the audience might be seen to be that, the audience paintings. But like this one is about a kind of almost a humanistic chaos. Um, whereas, like for example, a painting that I'm working, uh, that I worked on of of the dervish dancers on um, 63rd Street, which is just another establishment in New York and where people are involved with a, an esoteric activity as opposed to a, um, a more physical activity. Uh, um, I was kind of interested in, in another sense of order. In a funny kind of way, what I'm developing, what I've been developing, is just simply one idea. And that idea is, 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 is about the relationship between myself as a person to whatever it is or whoever it is that I'm looking at. So it could be argued that I could view the world through a reflection in a doorknob. I could actually stay in the studio for the rest of my life and find something in that to sustain myself. That's certainly true, and I'm well aware of that. In relation to that idea of order, when I, I, I have a, um, a, some observation of that possibility, there's a kind of monkish uh, um, f um, potential in that, which uh, appeals to me, that I, I could be quiet in a room and not under the influences of all these extraordinary impressions like New York. But that's not being um, part of, the, of, of my human potential right now. argued that I could view the world through a reflection in a doorknob. I mean, if I relied on my logical, my reasoning to um, approach a painting, I'd be plodding. Wonderful use of geometry 